Shalom, everybody. Shalom. Oh, I was talking about it. Savior, 
and Lord, you are our King. You're the one and only God, and so we praise your holy name. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus our Messiah, we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to do the Shema right now. Please, everyone, stand and rise. The celebration of our Lord as we do the Shema is the call to worship, really, to listen and obey the Lord. And God gave it to the Jewish people, but it's really giving it to all people as well. Uh, let's just go right to the Shema. Next to Shema. We're not going to do our normal practice song. In our congregational service, we practice first and then we do the Shema. So just go forward, sweetie. There you go. You ready? Shema.
He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. Guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. And when Rich was there at the end, after the surgery, even before his surgery, he had peace. He had the shalom of our Messiah. Yeah. Before the surgery, after the surgery, and he was in peace. And we just got to praise God for that. So he says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou dost prepare a table before me in the presence of the enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And that's where he is now. Psalm 116, verse 15. God, it is God's preciousness here. It says, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his godly ones. Now, yes, we're going to miss him, but in all God's eyes, who's in heaven with him? And that's why it's precious. Because he's found at home. He's found at home with the Lord. And that's why the Lord is this. We're going to play a memorial video now of Pastor Cooper. I'm going to do a little bit of an introduction to some of the uh, some of the pictures and some of the video we have of him. And uh, it's such a blessing to be able to do all this for him. You can see the table here in the front. And uh, we had the friend family actually made that picture, got that picture taken care of. Um, put a beautiful picture of Pastor Cooper at one of our funerals. I mean, I'm sorry, one of our weddings that we did together uh, last year. And so that's a great picture of him. His hat, of course, is the symbol that he always wore that hat. You know why he wore a hat? Just to go. New York. <laughs> Because he wanted to keep the sun off his bald head. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the hats that we got him, actually. Uh, it's, you know, this is where I can get right down and tag him at. I can't. Okay. What? Paper boy. Paper boy? Paper boy. That's not the old version. That's the newer version. Ready? Okay, we're going to send it off. That is Cooper. Let's go back. Go back. A little slower. That's him as a baby. That's him about, I don't know, what, six or eight years old. That's the picture we have on the car. That's his sister, Donnie. There's a mom and dad. That's where he got. Uh, oh, I'm trying to pass it. You don't have to pass it. There's Rich at his church. Can you slow down? Just a little bit, you're saying. You can move back to the other. Photos. When we get to the synagogue, that was the place where he had his bar mitzvah. It's a young Israel. Right there, see that young Israel? That's his bar mitzvah picture, which we have up on the table as well. That's where Rich was going to church in New York City and he was part of the choir. There's a Hanukkah celebration at Simpson's house. Rich was always first in line. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's Brian telling me anything with Rich. Brian was given to work many years ago. Rich sells me brownies. I don't know what to do, but I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. There's one more celebration. There's a Passover. There's a risk on the food of the Passover. There's one more, yeah. We used to do it in the middle of the church Sunday. Those rich really in the building hanging out. <laughs> that was one of our, uh, oh, that was a long time ago, Samson, you remember that? 
Um, this is after he got into the rehab, so it's after a week. So he's sitting up, he's having a good old time. And he went over going through some bill with him at that time. And this is probably the best picture of all. There's a man standing here. That's the bookstore. There he is with his gun practicing again. Thank God uh, he didn't shoot that very much. <laughs> he wasn't very good at it. <laughs> and there he is. 76 years old.
from Orange County. And um, Mama has been a friend of Richie's for a very long time, but many of you don't know her. Um, but we do. So there she is. No, Mama. Hello.
as the Uber's invitation stays me. It was not until we moved closer to the area that I had the opportunity to fully engage with the Petit Shua community, thanks to Pastor Cooper, one introduction. His prayers for my family and me were unwavering, and I will forever be grateful for his intercession, especially during my illness last year. Pastor Cooper prayed diligently for my community, devoting time each morning to lift us up in prayers. His commitment, so his commitment to spreading the word of Yeshua was evident in every aspect of his life. Pastor Cooper encouraged me to engage in evangelism, providing tracts and offering unwavering support in follow up. Even during his own hospitalization, he continued to demonstrate his dedication to sharing his faith, distributing trust to hospital staff, and inspiring me to do the same. Pastor Cooper's remarkable sense of humor, punctuality, and organizational skills were admired by all who knew him. His passion for serving the Lord was evident in his engagement to return home from the hospital to prepare his sermons in higher studies. In his life, Pastor Cooper exemplified what it means to live for Yeshua, leaving behind layers of faith, compassion, and dedication. We will be deeply missed, but his teachings and influence will continue to inspire all who have the privilege of knowing him. Thank you. We also have, uh, first we're going to get Henry uh, on, the, uh, on the Zoom. So Henry, you're, you're next. I'm sorry, I skipped over you. Hang on a second, we've got to plug you in. And then we're going to have Beth and Carol. Can we get a stand up here? Another stand, there's another stand. So a little stand over here. One no, by the piano. The microphone stand by the piano. Well, yeah, thank you. So that way, when people put the mic down, they don't have to sign it. Are we good? Is that it? Is Henry? We're, we're working on it just a second. This is Henry from New York City, very good friend of the cast and crew. Okay, go ahead, Henry, we got you. Uh, I'm not, 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 not
12 cents at all. Uh, he was uh, more of a um, kind of, um, actually, he became a brother. So um, we would uh, talk uh, every Saturday on the telephone for about an hour, and the truth would bring you to the center and said, we would write. Um, and um, backtracking just slightly, when COVID uh, hit in uh, 2020, um, the, and the camp was closed, um, the following year, 2021, we moved together again. And that's the year that COVID was again, and that camp was again closed down because COVID uh, invaded the entire camp. And I was, I was like, uh, first, you know, I was 
Having concluded this, that one died for all, therefore all died, and he died for all, so that they who live might no longer live for themselves, but to him who died and rose again on their behalf. This is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Yeshua Mashiach, whom you have sent. One thing I have asked of the Lord that I shall seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to meditate in his temple. Yeshua is saying this, these things I have spoken to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be made full. And his prayer, Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, that you not only died for us and saved us from the penalty of our sins so that we can be with you forever, but you put yourself in our hearts and your holy fear so we have nothing to be afraid of. And then we do not worry and get stressed out. We can go to you yeah. and you are always there to put your comforting hands on us. Thank you, Lord, for not only your salvation, but your perennial care over us more than anybody we have ever known or ever will know in this world. So, Lord, we thank you and praise you. In Yeshua's name, amen. 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 Joined the congregation last few years. How's everybody going? So, I've known Cooper for about two years. I was, uh, we were like stepbrothers, even though he was the older, meaner stepbrother, you know. <laughs> I was, he had the like, younger, meaner stepbrother. Um, he was a fantastic community, fantastic. Uh, everybody's wore out. Psalms 23. That was uh, one of the verses he sent me a couple of days before he passed away. Uh, we were sending verses back and forth. And, um, I got the call from Pastor Hill that uh, Cooper was in the hospital when it happened. So uh, the first thing we did was we went right up there to see him. And he was in great spirits, just like no, no different than we are right now. He, was, right. You know, he felt good. He was talking. He was, he was praising God, you know. How you doing today, Cooper? So I'm a work in progress. We <laughs> <laughs> pointed that out last week. Sometimes I'm a work in progress. I'm a work in progress. And I'll get to that in just a minute. So uh, Cooper asked me, he called me up and sent me a text. Hey, can you get my mail? Hey, my mailbox is probably full. You're going to have an extra key. Hey, uh, can you uh, bring my mail up here? And I didn't realize until like the third or the fourth time I brought his mail up that uh, he was doing God's work. You know, it wasn't it wasn't for bills, it, it wasn't for letters from friends, it wasn't for, you know, for eviction notices. He was receiving uh, uh, Christian flyers in the mail. And he was sending donations. So many organizations. So many organizations. He was a good man. Um, I got a call. He had a wanted to pick up a firearm. You know, calls me up and he says, "Hey, I'd like to have a gun for protection with the world getting as bad as it is." No conspiracy theories. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I show up at his apartment and I'm looking around and it looked like a Mel Gibson movie. I mean, there were posters on the wall and you know pictures of the Biden and Trump. Just it was pretty great. It's pretty great. So uh, he goes to the closet and he says, uh, he says, I've got this shotgun. Do you think he's any good? So uh, here's Cooper, you know, walks out of the room with a shotgun and he's talking to the closet. And I was like, this is the worst for you, buddy. I said, I'm going to do a wall. So uh, we tucked him up to the like Cabela's and uh, you know, the first thing he does is he walks his blood over and he sits in between two women. And he goes, you guys know Jesus? He goes, do you guys know Yeshua? And the one lady says, well, she goes, I kind of, uh, 
I used to go to church. Oh my gosh, he turned it on. He sat there for an hour. The guy was done. It was ready. We were waiting to sign the paperwork, but he wasn't done. <laughs> no matter what we did, he was, he was bringing people to God constantly, just preaching and preaching and preaching. And that's all he cared about. He didn't care about his private life. He didn't care about, you know, where he was going to eat dinner or, you know, the next, the, the, the next TV show that was coming on. He only cared about Christ. He only loved Christ. Again, I got a little phone call. Says, so, uh, Jason, I got to go to car accident and I need to pick up a car. Can you, uh, can you take me uh, to the dealership? So we show up at the dealership and this question comes out and, you know, he's showing us around and we're going to pick up a lot. And uh, once again, here he goes. He says, hey, man, you go to church? The Russian kid says, yeah, I go to the Russian Orthodox Church. And Coop goes, do you know Yeshua? <laughs> so here we are in the dealership. And the kid is giving his life to God. He's praying the prayer with Elizabeth Cooper. I was just sitting, I was blown yeah. I was so blown away. I mean, it's just everywhere we did, it didn't matter. Such an example for all of us. And that's what it is. It's an example for all of us. You know, we, we, we shy away from speaking. Yeah. You know, we shy away from spreading the word. We're afraid of who we're going to talk to and how we're going to treat us. You know, but Cooper had that fire. He had Christ in his heart. He had the favor of God. He was always with him. Just I'm mean, the most fantastic human being that I've ever seen. I was sitting at both and I was watching whether he was sitting here, whether he was sitting on the side, or whether he was on the pulpit. You know, I would just watch his face. I would listen to his voice and, you know, I would see his expressions. And that man. <laughs> that man loved oh God. You know, like nobody's business. And uh, he'll always be here in my heart. And he'll always be that example that every chance that you get to spread the word, you know, we spread the word. It is so important. And uh, Pastor Hill will get to that in just a few minutes here. But it is so important to give your life to God. It is so important to have that strength, to have that resilience. Because he's going to judge us, and he's the judge that matters. What people say about us and what people believe, it's, it's going to fade away within minutes. It's not going to matter. But what he does when we close our eyes and open them in heaven is what's going to count. Yeah. Okay. Thank you guys for your time. Amen. Oh, Jason, you're going to do the Lord's Prayer. I will do the Lord's Prayer. Sorry, the Lord. Yeah, Jason and uh, Hector are covering Pastor Cooper's cantering uh, right now. So uh, the Lord's Prayer was one of Rich's favorite prayers to pray. And so Jason's learning Hebrew and he's going to do the English to us. So I'm not going to have the words on the screen, so I'm just going to read these. All right. Please stand up.
Spring Valley, well, it used to be Spring Valley Sundays ago. Now it is Eastway Christian Center. I remember that. And Pastor has been such a blessing to this congregation. We've been here a lot for 21 years. Right here, this wow. in this chapel. We started here on Rosh Hashanah 2003. So this September, oh, we're not going to make it to September. Well, 20 years we've been here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Rich. Praise the Lord. Well, friends, uh, Pastor Cooper was just a joy. Um, and I don't know if you knew how much of a joy he was to everybody. Um, just uh, always so positive. Always looking on the bright side. And he had a little trouble sometimes uh, with the alarm here. <laughs> <laughs> Finally got him trained to give us a call when it went off. <laughs> <laughs> My daughter Christiana is our child care director. And every Friday at 5 o'clock, he kind of starts to roll in here. If there's something that's not right in the building, he goes to my daughter and lets her know so she can clean it. <laughs> and my daughter Christiana uh, said, Can you tell Pastor Cooper that I'm not maintenance? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I said, Pastor Cooper, if there's anything wrong, just talk to maintenance. That's my daughter. No, I <laughs> what a joy he was. So, just a little funny story. This is not Pastor Cooper, I don't know what it is. I get a call, and it's like 5.30 on a Friday, and uh, Pastor Cooper says, I can't get into our cabinet. Somebody's changed the lock <laughs> on Beth Yeshua's cabinet. I said, oh. I said, wow, that's kind of strange. I said, Pastor Cooper, are you sure it's Beth Yeshua's cabinet? <laughs> he says, oh yes, I'm very sure. And so one thing led to another a series of phone calls. I'm trying to get it straightened out uh, without having to come down. And of course, that's impossible. So finally, he decided to cut a strange lock on the Beth Yeshua cabinet. And he opens it up and he goes, Oh, this is the Koreans' cabinet. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I had raced down here because I didn't want an international incident to be the Koreans. <laughs> anyway, we're going to miss him. And I'm sure if there's any trash or something that needs to be cleaned up. Cleaned up in heaven. I think he's probably getting Peter. He's saying, Peter, you look like your maintenance. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to love you to see you again. Who was not our respected person? If you were here, well, then you were a maintenance. <laughs> right? Trying to see if we have anybody else that was on the list. That's here, they're not here. So, I will get to my story and then we'll move on with our stories. My wife and my beautiful bride, uh, Anna, and I met Pastor Cooper 24 years ago in the year 2000 uh, when I became an incident rabbi at Lev Hashem. Richard was the worship leader of the congregation at that time and he led the worship team. Like he was the maestro of an orchestra. He had his little baton and he waved it. <laughs> so uh, that was an interesting start to our relationship. Uh, then he became one of the founding fathers of Becky Show 2003. He became the associate pastor after attending for two years. So it took me two years to get him to accept the pastoral position. And I, t I talked to him weekly on that, and he'd be like, I'm still praying, I'm still praying. He, he, he really didn't want to be a pastor. Um, he would rather be a lay pastor, but uh, I pushed him. So, and you guys are thankful about that. Yeah. yeah. Amen. 
So I pushed him into it, but the Lord wanted him to be pastor for sure. So he'd been pastoring for 19 years. In all our years as friends and brothers, Rich was always faithful and always punctual. He's faithful in opening up the building for services, faithful in evangelizing every place we went to evangelize, he was there. He was faithful in serving as our pastor, always ready uh, to fill in preaching and sermon when I was gone, and always ready to pray with the body of his life before and after services. He was faithful being our cantor after Rick passed away, and always faithful playing the flutes. He loved to play flutes uh, at our worship time and our services. So when you go to Bible college, they tell you that 90% of the ministry is just showing up and being used with God, 10% is praying. Well, who did both? He showed up and he did a lot of praying as well. He was always faithful in showing up and always faithful in praying a lot. So faithful is a wonderful word to be able to uh, describe him. And you know, he never got sick. I'm thinking maybe he got sick about three times in about the 24 years that we knew him. Wow. It was incredible. God really blessed him. Yeah. And um, I don't think he got COVID either, if I remember right. So maybe three times, Jack. Yeah. Rich was a model of consistency. And I believe his name comes after the definition of consistency in Weber's dictionary. So. However, once too many changes came along in life, then he did begin to have some problems, as you all may know. <laughs> If I piled a little stuff on him, then he kind of uh, shut down a little bit there. But this was just a part of his personality that we all loved, which was also a stickler for being on time and actually being early to every event. He was always at least 10 minutes early, and I was always 10 minutes late picking him up. <laughs> and so uh, it's funny how personalities are, and to me, Ten minutes late was normal growing up in New Jersey, New York area, but for Cooper, he was New York Jew, so ten minutes early was normal for him. And so we had to deal with that as uh, the years went on. Rich always had an unusual way of taking his thoughts captive to the obedience of Yeshua. He would write down his thoughts in a notebook. And then look them over later on at the end of the day. And so as we're going to his apartment, there are like piles of notebooks all over the place. For the last 21 years, I had no idea what thoughts he wrote down. And he had no worries about anyone trying to read his notes either. That's because he had the worst chicken scratch I've ever seen. <laughs> ever. Nobody could read his handwriting except for him. So incredible. And they, you know, that the government probably should have used him as a coach. <laughs> and I'm shocked he wasn't a doctor in disguise. Well. You know, very prescriptions. We've had a very unusual way of answering the question, how are you doing good? He would reply in a couple of ways, I'm following Jesus. Or his favorite reply was, I'm a working and work in progress. And he knew that we were all in our sanctification process. Yeah. And so that was a big uh, issue with him in life for all of us. A good issue, though. Because he had a little bit of uh, empathy and sympathy towards us as well. You may not know this, and uh, I kind of uh, told some of the the inner uh, folks of the congregation. But Cooper described his emotional state by saying he was having a lion day or a lamb day. Now, <clears throat> nobody knew this in the congregation, just my wife and I. A lion day meant that sometimes you'd ask, I don't feel well, it's a lion day today. You know, first he's saying, well, we're in progress, but it's a lion day. Or it's a lamb day. So I had to kind of go back and really focus on the definitions that he's given us over the years of what a lion day meant. He felt strong in the Lord and was ready to get in that spiritual fight for the day. That was a lion day for Rich. A lamb day meant he felt weak in the Lord, like a baby, and needed to completely rely on the Lord for everything. And so that's what it meant to him. 
And uh, sometimes, you know, he had said that uh, he was feeling like he was nine years old in the congregation, so I told him to go sit with the kids <laughs> and then on the side of the congregation for the service. So if he asked me or my wife, Ron, if he experienced the same thing, he was shocked to know that we had no idea what he was talking about, lion or lamb days. Uh, maybe that's why he never told anybody else about them. So one of his favorite songs we like today today has that same phrase in the mind and land. And so that was in the morning to him. So on the table you can see there is a great big picture of Drew. That was his favorite hat, which is hanging on top of that as well. His favorite flute, which his grandfather gave him when he was a young boy. There's a certificate showing two trees that were planted in Jerusalem Forest in honor of Pastor Cooper. Uh, Shlomi and Miriam, our missionary, uh, our ministry reps, uh, got those planted for in there. And there's a coop bottle head. <laughs> so I got to go bring the bottle head. For anybody that's really greasy, you can just, you know, go over there and knock it around. <laughs> Somebody gave it to us. Uh, to him as a birthday present, we kind of think it was Jeff. I think but it was either Jeff or John. We can't figure that out. So maybe through the uh, internet they'll be able to tell us. John was supposed to be here, but he can't. He couldn't be here. So to me, that's got to be the funniest thing ever. Look at it. It's just amazing. You know, look at those. Well, my friends, Pastor Cooper has no more worries, no more heart problems. No more issues in life to deal with. No more taking his thoughts captive. He's having a great time of fellowship with the Lord and with all his family members. He, we believe his dad got saved. His mom definitely was saved. His sister was saved, but his other sister was not. Uh, oh, and his aunt. His aunt was saved. And then we buried three of his family members over the years. Uh, he was a great lover of his aunt as well because his aunt was a strong believer in Yeshua. Of course, she was Jewish. And uh, so he's up there worshiping with friends and his buddies as well that have gone on to be with the Lord before him. We can take comfort in knowing he's up there and he's waiting for all of us to join him. It's just that uh, we don't want to join him that soon, <laughs> if you know what I mean. That's so, just a rapture, of course. If there's anyone here today that has not become born again like Richard, like most of us here today that I would know, I'd like to give you the chance right now to give your life to Yeshua, Jesus. You see, Richard received Yeshua many, many years ago when one of our people told the story of how that happened. Oh, that was Marlo. Yeah, Marlo told the story about how that happened a long time ago. He received Yeshua as the personal Lord and Savior, as Jewish Messiah. And we all utterly believed in him. And he grew up there in New York City uh, with Jews from Jesus. They had a congregation there in town, and he attended that for many years. So he believed in Yeshua's death on the tree for all of his sins. He believed in Yeshua's resurrection on the third day, so that he could have eternal life with the Lord. So that's the gospel in a nutshell. A person has to repent from their sinful lifestyle, believing in Yeshua's death and resurrection. It's not about just head knowledge, it's heart knowledge as well. It's knowing all that information, but knowing inside deep we're sinners and we're going to be judged for that sin. Now we need to lovingly come to God, humbly come to Him. That's all it takes to get our names written in the book of life to receive salvation. So if you had something, if you add something to the gospel, like Torah observance, following the 613 commandments for salvation, or water baptism, or even discipleship, then we're changing the unequivocally simple gospel message. Paul said about those who do change the gospel, in Galatians chapter 1, verse 8 9, let him be accursed. Share the gospel with them, but let them be a curse if they don't want to receive it. But that doesn't mean we give up, because the Lord said, don't give up. We didn't give up on his father, we didn't give up on his mother. His mother received Yeshua on her deathbed, my wife's letter to the Lord. 
maybe two days before she died. The night before. The night before she died, actually, yes. She was in a coma, too. And we prayed for her to come out of that coma while she... my wife was going to visit, and she did. Why right away. And everybody at the hospital was totally shocked. She led to the Lord, and then she ate. She was hungry. And then, you know, next day she passed. And we praise the Lord for, you know, God's mercy, God's grace. God loves us so much that he's willing to even save someone at the end of their life. And he was so happy that his mother came to the Lord. His Jewish mom. So I'm sure she was up there greeting him as he went to heaven. We don't want anybody here leaving a curse to God. Truth certainly wouldn't want you not to be saved this day. This is the day that we say goodbye to him, but really we're saying to see you later. See you later in the rapture. Maybe we'll go up there before the rapture. But if you have this desire, and there might be people on the internet that listen to this service, we really wanted to promote this wonderful memorial for Richard, but do it in a Messianic Jewish way so that the world can see. You know, we have great joy in our services here. Yes, we cry, we reminisce too. And, you know, our heart is sad in that sense, but we have great joy and great hope knowing that he's there. And you see, we don't just guess that he's there. We know 100%. We're sure 100%. And he made it. Because we have the deposit here. We have the rough of the dash. Once you believe in Yeshua, you give your life to Yeshua, you receive the Holy Spirit, he comes inside and he speaks to us on the inside. So we know, he speaks to our spirit, and we know. We know that we know that we know. And it's personal. And all we can do is tell people. And it's up to you whether you believe or not. And so I'm going to say a prayer. It's a prayer of salvation. And it's really just getting your life to Jesus, getting your life to Yeshua. I know many of us here are already believers, but I don't know everybody here. And so if you have that desire, then just pray right along with me. And if you're on the internet, if you're listening in, even after we post this later on, then you can give your life to the Lord. He will listen. He will listen to a prayer of repentance. He'll listen to a prayer of salvation. And just say these words. Just say, Yeshua, I now believe in you. I trust you as my Lord, my Savior, my Jewish Messiah. I thank you that you died on that tree 2,000 years ago for my personal sins. Thank you for your resurrection that gives me eternal life. Thank you that you are the Son of God and I believe in you. I repent from all of my sinful lifestyle. I confess I am a sinner. Help me to live a life worthy of you for the rest of my life. And if you pray that prayer, then please let us know if you're on the internet. Please let us know that you receive Yeshua. And if you pray from your heart that you are saved. Anyone here today with our eyes still closed, heads still out, lift up your hand if you pray that prayer today that you gave your life to the Lord. Father, So I pray for all of us here today. Give us your comfort. Give us your joy. Give us your peace. Help us through the process of grieving the Lord for Pastor Cooper. My wife and I were the closest ones to him. But that doesn't make it any different for anyone else. We're all going to grieve for Pastor Cooper. He was a good man, as Jesus said. So, Father, please help us. Glorify and magnify thy name. And continue to help that Yeshua as we move forward. Lord, we need a new place of worship. And so help us, Lord, to find a good place, a godly place, one that we, Lord, can be our own managers as well. And so, Lord, 
You lift up the rest of this congregation, the rest of this service. Those are on the internet as well. Everyone is hurting, Lord. Pray for that peace, that shalom to be on our hearts. We love you, thank you, and praise you in the mighty name of Yeshua. We pray. Amen. Hector's going to come forward now. He's going to lead us in the Kaddish. It's the Aramaic prayer or the Mormon's prayer. So please rise, everyone stands, in reverence unto the Lord.
gracious unto you, the Lord lifts up his countenance upon you and gives you peace. you and keep you, the Lord, make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you shalom, give you peace. You may be seated. That's the end of our service, folks. And right now, I say goodbye to all our people on the internet and Facebook. We're there. Thank you guys all for coming.